Hey everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography. And today isn't about a pretty picture. It's about something unimaginably far away. Something ancient. A single point of light and what it represents. And the challenge of capturing it from a backyard. So if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on what's coming. Now, let's hunt Tun 618. This faint little dot doesn't look like much, but it holds a black hole with more mass than 66 billion suns, and I captured it from my backyard. Tun 618 is a quasar, the ultra-bright core of a galaxy more than 10 billion light years away, and its heart is a black hole so massive it could swallow our entire solar system nearly a thousand times over. Its event horizon stretches nearly 400 billion kilometers wide. That's about 90 times larger than Neptune's orbit and 600,000 times more volume. This is one of the most powerful objects in the universe. And yet from Earth, it looks like a faint star. At a magnitude of 15.9, Tun 618 is incredibly faint. It's also extremely tiny. As you can see in this image here, Tun 618 is completely lost in the star field. But if we zoom in, it starts to reveal itself. In order to capture Tun 618, I'll need ideal conditions, premium guiding numbers and be able to hold that for hours at a time and a very sensitive camera sensor in order to capture and resolve the light from TUN 618. To give me the best possible chance, I'm going to be using my ASI 2600mm monochrome camera paired with a set of Optolong LRGB filters. Also, keeping noise under control is going to be absolutely critical. So, I'm going to be setting my temperature to minus 10 degrees Celsius. Now, at this time of year in Arizona, it kind of pushes the tech cooling plate to the limits, but we should be fine. Also, to stay ahead of the noise curve, I'm going to be dithering every two frames. And for my gain, I'm going to be using 100, which should give me a near perfect balance between noise and dynamic range. Now with how faint and how small TUN 618 appears, guiding is critical. I'm talking sub arc second tolerance. So I'm gonna be using 180 second exposures, which allows me to see deep, but also keep guiding sharp. Now, I'm not sure how this is gonna work out, but I'm excited to try. I'm going to be using Nina to run my imaging sequence, but there's one small problem here. In Nina's Sky Atlas, TUN 618 is non-existent. But that's okay because TUN 618's coordinates are easily obtainable. And we can use those coordinates to still set up a sequence and tell our telescope exactly where to go. Now to do that, what I'm going to do is go to Sequencer, Advanced Sequencer, and I'm going to go to Templates. And I have pre-built templates for broadband, narrowband, and I have a video going over exactly how to build these, which I'll have in the description of this video here. So if you have any questions, make sure to check out that video. And as always, don't hesitate to ask. So what I'm going to do here is my broadband target. I'm going to pull that onto the workspace and that gives me the ability to set coordinates as well as everything else that we'll need to image TUN 618. Starting with the coordinates for RA, our coordinates are going to be 12, 28, 24.5. And for declination, we're going to be doing 31, 28, 39. 
That's going to center ton 618 in the field of view. Now, ton 618 is going to look like a star field. So I'm not too concerned with rotation, so I'm just going to leave that at zero degrees. In my template, I already have meridian flip, salute center rotate, guiding, autofocus, everything that we need to image ton 618. And again, if you want to check it out, I'll have the video on how to build this in the description of this video here. So for luminance, I'm going to be running 90 180 second frames. Gain is going to be 100. Offset 50. Dithering every two frames. And again, that's for luminance. For red, green, and blue, we're going to be doing 10 each at 180 seconds. Gain 100. Offset 50 dithering every two. For green, 10 frames at 180 seconds, gain 100, offset 50, dithering every two. And finally blue, 10, 180 seconds, gain 100, offset 50, and dithering every two. Now, up at the top, we want to put in my startup, which is going to cool the camera. We want minus 10 degrees Celsius. And then it's going to unpark the scope. And then once everything is done, we'll go grab my end, which is going to warm the camera and park the scope. So now we have everything set to image ton 618. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to save this and we're going to put this in the same directory that we're going to house all of our ton 618 images. I like to pre set up everything. So once I get out under the stars, all I have to do is just load and go. So we'll just go ahead and save that. And then once we get out to set up, we can just load everything up, sluice center, rotate, and off we go. So we are now locked on and tracking ton 618. And I have to say, I'm pretty impressed with how this is turning out so far. It's nice and high up in the sky, perfect for imaging. The scope is picking it up beautifully and guiding is incredible tonight. So I'm really excited to see what we get here. Now, even though it's just a tiny little speck in the center of the screen, it's incredible to know that that light is 10.4 billion years old and we're capturing it right now. So tonight I'm going to be focusing primarily on luminance and that's because I want to get as good of a signal as I can. So I'm going to be running about four and a half hours of luminance and then following it up with about 30 minutes each of red, green, and blue and then putting it all together into a full RGB image in post-processing. So I'm going to let this run for the rest of the night and then in the morning I'm going to clean it up and start processing. After recording that piece, I was looking at my telescope and it was pointing straight up in the sky. And it was a different kind of feeling than when you're imaging a nebula or a galaxy, something that's there, something that's tangible. And you don't really think about it too much, but these objects, they exist, they're real, they are there. And it doesn't really hit you until you have one on screen and you're looking at it. And I'm looking straight up exactly where my scope is pointed. And the only way I can describe it, if you've ever been to a total solar eclipse in complete totality, that humbling feeling that you get when totality hits, it, it almost leaves you speechless. And just knowing that 
directly over my head is this monster, this massive black hole. You know, you don't really think about these things because you don't see them too often. You don't talk about them too often. It's always about galaxies and nebula and planets, but that feeling is just amazing. And, and I can't describe exactly how it is. Sun 618 is the farthest, faintest object I've ever chased. And at magnitude 15.9, it's outside the visual capability of my 200p, but it's right inside the photographic capability. I wasn't even sure I'd be able to capture it because even though it's a faint dot on the screen, you need ideal conditions, both sky and mechanically, in order to resolve that dot with how small and faint it truly is. You can't see it at all. So it comes down to trusting your equipment and yourself. You need to be able to trust that your equipment is pointing where it thinks it's pointing. And you also need to trust yourself that you have everything set up correctly and that you have good coordinates to start out with. I wanted to prove to myself that I could capture this ancient light with my Newtonian from my backyard. And it's not about a pretty picture this time. It's about a dot. But it's also more than that. It's about what that dot represents. It's about what that dot truly holds and the object that produces that dot. That ancient light left ton 618 over 10 billion years ago before our solar system even existed and some of those photons fell on my camera sensor and now they're here on screen for you to see as well so i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope that it inspired you and if it did and you want to help support the channel check out that join button and consider joining a Hidden Light Photography membership. There's lots of perks in it for you and your support helps me bring you more content. Another way you can help support the channel is checking out my High Point Scientific Affiliate link if you're in the market for some new gear. It doesn't cost you anything extra and the support helps keep the channel growing. Also, if this video inspired you, even just a little bit, that channel icon that popped up, hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any future content. Drop a comment in the comment section. Tell me about a journey that you took that was out of the ordinary. And have you tried to capture ton 618? I'd love to hear about it. And then check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.